listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, the After Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's The Carrie Diaries After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Carrie Diaries After Show. <laughs> Girls just want to have fun, right? <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to the After Buzz show for The Carrie Diaries, Season 1, Episode 1. This is the pilot, which is very exciting. I'm your host, Danica Kennedy, and you can find me on Twitter at Danica Kennedy or at DanicaKennedy.com. Bing is for doing. And I'm going to turn it over to my co-host. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Anique Dufour. All right. Well, <laughs> why don't we get started? What was your overall impression with the show? I actually really liked it. Me too. I was surprised. I was at first I was scared that it was going to be really really bad. <laughs> because I mean, you know, it's Sex in a City like the beginning. <laughs> but I really really I was really impressed and I really liked the show. Yeah, me too. And it's interesting because Sex and the City was such an adult, mature, sexy show, and now it's a more teen CW show, so it could be really hit or miss with it, but I think they did a really good job. I do too, I do too, and the characters, I think Anna Sophia Robb plays Carrie really well. Yeah. And Sarah and Jessica Parker should be proud. I think so too. <laughs> it was cool because they did a lot of the same aspects of Sex and the City, but they really did a whole new spin on it. And I was kind of afraid when it was coming out, I thought maybe they'd do the baby Samantha and Miranda and kind of make it the same as the show. And I think it's cool they mixed it up a little bit, gave her some new friends. She's not quite in her skin as she is as grown up Carrie yet. And you're going to I think we're going to see her develop more into the Carrie Weedo from Sex and the City. I agree. I agree. Um, the fashion is something. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially. 80s. Yeah, definitely. But I think she's going to be, I think throughout the years, hopefully it'll catch on. And throughout the years, you'll see her grow into more and more of a fashionista that Carrie is in Sex and the City. Yeah. And when I first started watching this episode, I was kind of disappointed with her fashion sense. I was like, she's in a hoodie and a t-shirt. What's wrong with this? You know? But then as the episode goes on, I think as the series goes on, she's going to get more and more 80s fashion influences, which I'm really hoping for because that's such a big part of Sex and the City. So. Oh, I agree. And happens. especially that the last the last dress she wore for the last scene, that was, that was definitely Carrie. Super cute. <laughs> 80s pink and black polka dot yeah. love it <laughs> and that's how about that silver sequin one yeah oh lots of scrunchies in the show scrunchies yes scrunchies i miss scrunchies i know right let's bring them back <laughs> we should we should bring it back for the show next week we should wear them <gasps> i'm so for it okay let's do it okay <laughs> all right well let's dive in so let's see what do you think about the whole carry at home when it opens up in the beginning with her mom just passed away that was kind of a shock for me i didn't expect that from the first episode i think it leads off into a good storyline especially when it comes to like her sister being like the black sheep per se of the family and she's kind of like out of it and it's just it comes to terms her sister and her father and her it's they're all coming to terms with the fact that her mother did pass yeah and it is something that I guess she was super super close to her and it's like losing a best friend yeah so it was it was kind of a shock but I think it will lead into the series hopefully to make it really good do you think that Carrie and her sister Dorit are kind of conflicting characters because of their mother's death and that added to it I think I do because you know I think they do because at the same time Carrie had a lot more of time with her mother than Dorit did. 
you know, Dorit is like the youngest one. Like she said, she's, you know, she had, Carrie had a 16th birthday and she went to high school. You know, Dorit never got that from her mom. Yeah. And I feel like Dorit's kind of doing the whole rebellious thing because of her mother's death. Like she's, they found pot in her room and she's kind of hiding things and stealing things. She goes out late at night and they can't find her. And I think she's kind of rebelling to get attention and to cope with her mother's death and then Carrie is kind of turning into more of the adult of the family and taking on the motherly responsibilities and kind of being you know the older wiser one female influence in the family oh yeah I completely agree with you and I was actually gonna point that out it's it's funny and it, I, lo- I would love to see and I cannot wait to see what they do with the character of Dorit if she's gonna get into more trouble and if for you know she's gonna have like her spotlight or if it's yeah. just gonna be you know about just Carrie well should we dive into Carrie's life at school mm-hmm. of course all right well she goes to school and there's the hot new guy at school Sebastian, Sebastian Kid. <laughs> yes very sexy you know he walks in and he's the new hot guy at school but she already knew him from a year before she met him at their local swim club and they had a little kiss kind of thing he they were flirting and talking and they had a flashback in the episode where he leans in to kiss her and she's 15 years old and she's nervous so she shoves him in the pool out of you know fear and then they have this makeout scene and it's really cute and then she never sees him again and then he shows up at school a year later and he's the hot guy at school so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that and then carrie's sort of nemesis at school the who, gens yes donna Ladonna. Donna, Ladonna. you gotta that love name that name i love that name <laughs> so do i <laughs> can we just call yes. each other donna Ladonna? No? it's our new names on the show the yeah i really i think i that's that's yeah i love that that name is i think gonna live on even way past this series yeah <laughs> it's a great like evil character name too because you don't really like her because you can tell that Carrie likes Sebastian, and then later on in the episode, there's a school dance, and Donna LaDonna kind of takes Sebastian away. So you can see sort of a jealousy thing, but we don't know what's going to happen with that. Do you have any predictions? Um, I think that she's going to keep him at a distance for yeah. a while and just let him sweat it out, which I think she should. Yeah. She has more important things, like not that internship and... Yeah. Manhattan, which um, I'm pretty sure she's happy about. Not so much about the internship, but more about that she's in Manhattan. In Manhattan. And that's going to be a really big thing for Carrie in the future, of course. And that was the whole thing was, we can sort of recap, that Carrie went to school and she saw her dad in the hallway at school. And she kind of freaked out because the last time he was there was right. to tell her that her mom mm-hmm. was dying. So she faints and she's getting all stressed out and then the counselor and her dad uh, decide oh she should get an internship in Manhattan at this law firm which is super boring you know filing papers and you know not very fun but she's just so excited to be in Manhattan and be in the liveliness of it Mm -hmm. that it makes up for it don't you think oh yeah I definitely think so I mean who doesn't like being in Manhattan (laughs) yeah I know right (laughs) let's go and I loved the fact that you know you see things that like the century 21 and stuff from like living there personally Mm -hmm. but I loved um I loved the dynamic when she walked into like during lunch, you know, her new boss and stuff sends her over because she ripped her panios as she fell. And he sends her over to Century 21 to get some new pantyhose. And as she walks in, she sees like, you know, all the fashion. And I think that's pretty much when she like falls in love with with clothes, with clothes. <laughs> definitely. Which I'm excited to see what she's going to wear in the next episode. Yeah. Especially because it's 80s. You know, it's going to be fun and crazy and all of that. But when she's in the store, she meets this lady, Larissa. Well, let's back up a little bit. Carrie has a purse that belonged to her mother that her sister Dorit ruined by spilling nail polish all over it. So she decides, I still want the purse. I'm going to spice it up a little bit. So she splatter paints nail polish all over it and writes Carrie. And it's super cute so when she's shopping in the store this lady comes up and is admiring her purse but she thinks she's gonna steal it it's a really weird 
first impression sort of thing. But she becomes friends with this lady, uh, Larissa, Larissa, and she persuades Carrie into helping her shoplift a dress, which is kind of like bad influence sort of thing. And Carrie's excited by it, I think. She's meeting cool people in the city, and the girl invites her out later that night, and she has to pick between if she wants to go out and live this fake Manhattan lifestyle mm-hmm. that she's always wanted, or is she going to go to her high school dance in Connecticut? So right. It's kind of a little bit. And Larissa does work for Interview Magazine. Yes. So I think that what that what makes Carrie drawn to her, because it's fashion, you know, mm-hmm. it's like kind of like a foot, even though she is older than Carrie is, and she doesn't, of course, Carrie doesn't tell her how old she is. Yes. Um, but I think that with this Larissa woman, I think that it's going to be another kind of relationship where maybe it could be like her mentor yeah type of thing you know like in the fashion and maybe she'll get an internship with them and she doesn't tell larissa her age or that she's in high school still she kind of is just playing this sort of i'm a manhattan woman fashionista and i'm just gonna pretend i'm this person that i want to be which right. is cool. I like it, but <laughs> no. But I, I, I think at the end, um, she'll find her to be, maybe to be like a big sister, to kind of like take her under her wing. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping for anyway. <laughs> well, speaking about Sex in the City, we should talk about friends and the whole virginity thing because Carrie's friends, which aren't the same as Sex in the City, she has her best friends one's named mouse and she recently lost her virginity over a summer which is you know you're 16 and it ends up that the guy's kind of dumping her later he's this guy she met over a summer and he goes to princeton and then her other best friends uh maggie who's very adventurous she's dating this guy who's obviously gay which we're gonna he's closeted and they haven't had sex yet, but you can tell that she's had sex and it was with someone else. And you see her making out and cheating on her boyfriend with a cop. Was he a police officer? Yes, or, he was a police yeah, officer. <laughs> later in the episode. And then Carrie is a virgin still, and she's like, oh, I'm the only virgin left in my friend group, she thinks. and uh, But one of my favorite lines from this episode, it was so cheesy, but I love it. She said, uh, I lost my virginity to a man. Not a real man, but Manhattan. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. did she just say that? But <laughs> it's it's funny, but kind of true. Yeah. So, but anyways, when she's at her internship, she has to pick between if she wants to do the whole high school thing or do the Manhattan thing. And she decides to do the Manhattan thing and meet up with that lady, Larissa, that she met earlier. And... She goes to this bar and she's meeting all these artists and photographers and actors, designers. And you could tell that she's just so into that world and she wants to be a part of it. And she starts having fun and she meets two gay guys and she's like, I've never met gay people before, but her best friend's gay and she just doesn't even know it. Yeah, that's why I think they said um, I like the line that they said he one of the one of the gay guys said it's you either know you'll know someone or they're just in you know in the closet yeah and then it you just kind of like realize that you know her friend is you is know who they're looking, talking about looking at Rob Lowe pictures you yeah know, shirtless and yeah of course Rob Lowe and I love that too because it's so 80s you know like old Rob Lowe pictures but she ha- promised her dad that she was going to be home at a certain time and she breaks curfew because she was supposed to be back at the school dance but she picked this instead she still kind of went to the dance at the end, or she met up with her friends, right? Right. She met up with her friend at the end, and they actually see Sebastian and Donna LaDonna. Donna LaDonna in a car, and they're doing things that, you know, they're smoking pot. And she just sees him, and she kind of brushes him off, like standing strong and brushes him off. And I. Which is good. Like, which strong, is independent woman. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, well, you know. Like, he's like, oh, how could you, like, you know, kind of blow me off? He kind of had that look where he was like, how could you blow me off? Like, mad that she wasn't there, but kind of like, oh, I want you back. I don't want to be with this girl kind of thing. Right. And then she stands her ground and she's, she walks away. And um, I was that, that shocked me, actually. Yeah. (laughs) And, but I'm, I'm happy that they, they made it like that. I was proud of her for staying strong, you know, after all of that. 
but she had a fun time in Manhattan, so she doesn't really care, I think, at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. At that, at that point, it's Manhattan. It's not Sebastian. It's nobody. It's just plain Manhattan. Yeah. And then she's walking home, and there's cops at her house, and she starts freaking out, like, Dad, I was only an hour late. Like, I'm here. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. And it's her sister, Dorit, that was gone missing, but... Earlier in the episode, we saw Dorit sneak out of the house and take the phone off the line because she's sneaky like that. And then she comes in the next morning saying, oh, I tried to call. The phone was off the hook. And Carrie accuses her of being drunk and says, I don't want to be the mother figure for you. And it gets kind of heated. You know, the family problems Mm -hmm. because of the mother's death really come out at that point. And that's, I think, where you see Carrie take on the responsibility of being the mother figure yeah now that her mother's not there anymore that she'll take over and if you see her dad's face it you know realize that you know it it is what it is and she's going to be the one to raise her door raise her sister yeah and it's it's interesting to watch the dad's character develop too because he's newly a single dad and he doesn't really know what he's doing Mm -hmm. he's doing like both parenting roles now but Carrie's taking a lot of the motherly responsibility and so they go upstairs and have this talk like a heart to heart with her dad and she ends up getting grounded which I was like why isn't Dorit getting grounded like she's the one that's you know sneaking around and she's 14 years old and Carrie's being I mean Carrie has her mysterious Manhattan life too but they don't know about it so she's not right she shouldn't be getting punished as much I feel like (laughs) no definitely and I actually liked you know at the close to the end where together they went out and cleaned because they hadn't cleaned out her mother's you know closet yet so I like when they all go together and they clean out the closet yeah and they like you know she gives her sister the green dress which is the last dress that her mother wore and I t- to me, that was kind of like a little touching moment. Yeah. Because everybody's together and they're just like going through memories and packing the stuff, which can be hard. Yeah. And I just like to see where the whole dynamic between the family ends up. And it's good that Dorit got it because she was talking earlier in the episode. She was very upset that Carrie was getting the purse that was her mother's and that Carrie's 16th birthday happened and right. like all this stuff was happening for Carrie even though Carrie felt like she was the one the victim and kind of the one that was more sad it's she realizes that her sister's going through more and that's probably why she's rebelling because she's younger and it's harder for her to deal with no yeah I definitely agree and I just like to see where you know where it her character ends up because like in Sex in a City, it seems to be like a different, you know, like a different dynamic for where her sister in Sex in a City, where she doesn't really speak of her. Mm-hmm. So now that we see where it comes from, where they come from, then we can like put things together and say, oh yeah, this is where it started. And then just watch Sex in a City all over again and be like, okay, this is how, you know, everything ended up. Yeah. What do you think of Carrie's life in school versus the Manhattan life she's living? And what do you think she should pick? as her character well I think she should definitely um I think she's gonna stay in school yeah I think she will of course she becomes a writer um but at the same time I think that Manhattan going to the internship in Manhattan is a kind of like a stepping stone for her so when she does see see like everything you know because you walk in Manhattan it's like everything and when you when she sees it she just like falls in love with it automatically yeah and I'd like to see more and more of her in Manhattan as opposed to maybe school but at the same time it's the Carrie Diaries so it's like before she was in Manhattan so I guess they need to find like a balance between both worlds I was thinking of predictions for the show and one of mine was she has that boring internship at the law office and that lady she met Larissa is working at the fashion magazine and I'm thinking I wonder if she's somehow going to secretly switch to an internship at the magazine or get a job there for a writing position or something instead of staying with a law firm. That's just 
an idea or a thought I was thinking of to see if that happens. But what do you think? No, I think so too. I actually mm-hmm. think that maybe she'll she'll tell everybody that she's still at the law firm and then like she's helping Larissa out on the side. Yeah. With her with the interview magazine. Something like that yeah. will happen. And it's funny because at her law office job, she's not supposed to make personal calls or anything. And she's on the phone talking to her friend Mouse and about Sebastian and who likes who and, you know, teenage drama. And then her boss walks in and she kind of gets caught and has to hold off of it. So I don't think she's going to stay at the internship that long, but I guess we'll find out. We'll definitely find out. I'm actually kind of interested to find whether or not she meets a Manhattan boy. Yeah, like an older guy. Yeah, I mean, not that. I don't, not that. I don't think she would go very much older, but maybe a couple years older, and then he can like show her around, and she can have like a little triangle between the Manhattan guy and Sebastian. Sebastian, yeah. And see what happens there. I wonder what's gonna happen with that too. And do you think she's gonna tell her new Manhattan friends her age or that she's in high school, or keep that all part of her secret? I think she'll keep it a secret for a while. Yeah, and then maybe come out with it later when she's more confident. Yeah, with it. definitely. They'll they'll figure it out after a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's like one day a week. <laughs> where's, yeah. where's Carrie? She's in Connecticut. And when they went out with her, she was drinking champagne and having fun. And they were just like, oh, she talks about her parents so much and her sister, just like she's you know young or something but and she was kind of like yeah and one of the people at the table asked her where do you go to school and she named her high school and they're like no college and then her friend was like you don't need college anymore it's a new time and it's Manhattan you know yeah definitely and I just (laughs) I think I I, I would really I cannot wait to actually see what goes on with her and the Manhattan within and hopefully We'll get a few years and we'll see, you know, it develop. And then maybe, maybe they'll even have um, cameos. I know. Sarah Jessica Parker or. Wouldn't that be great? Like seeing into the future or something like a flash forward with just a little clip. That would be great. I think it would. I really do. Yeah. And I'm actually, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, seeing where it goes. Do you think that the same viewers that watch Sex and the City are going to watch The Carrie Diaries or it's going to be mainly, you know, people that watch CW type shows like 14 to 25 year olds kind of teen shows. I think I think both. I'm hoping that those that watch Sex and the City would catch up on Carrie Diaries. But I mean, you never know. You never know how a show will stick or whether or not it will continue to go on but I know that for sure that definitely there, it's a teen there's going to be a teen following and she gets a diary at the end of the episode I was going to mention and she starts writing in it and I think that's how she first starts writing and that's going to later develop into her whole um, newspaper article Sex in the City mm-hmm. so that'll be interesting to follow too and speaking of, sorry, I had to interrupt you for a minute, but speaking of the listeners and viewers, make sure everyone who's watching and listening to this podcast, this is a brand new show, The Carrie Diaries, it sounds really interesting, mm-hmm. and um, just make sure for everyone who's listening, go to iTunes, and from there you can, when you go to iTunes, search After Buzz TV, The Carrie Diaries, and from there you can rate and comment. Five stars would be great. <laughs> Tell yes. us how these lovely ladies are doing this is an awesome show from what i'm hearing and just let us know what you like to hear in the podcast how we can improve what you guys think is going to happen for this new show it sounds really great we're so, always looking for feedback so be sure exactly. to leave us comments <laughs> and exactly. rate and comment and tell a friend yes <laughs> spread the word around <laughs> you'd also feel free to tweet us at after buzz tv and at danica kennedy do you have twitter uh, I do have a Twitter. It's at Just Anique. That's at J U S T A N I K. Nice. So it's Danica and Anique. <laughs> yeah, but Danica and Anique kind of rhymes a little bit. Uh, but I do. I I'm looking forward to this show. Me I too. Really am. It's exciting to see what's going to happen because usually pilots, it's. I, a lot of pilots that I've seen, I'm like, uh, I don't know. And then I see a couple more episodes and I get more into it. But. For this show, I really liked the pilot, so I'm hoping it just keeps getting better and better, but we'll just have to find out. Yeah, definitely. Well, do you have any other comments about the show? 
Um, I liked that they still go with the the, the Carrie monologue. Yeah, kind of like the oh the, voice the inner over, voice, the inner voice as she's talking, and she has she has some good she has some good quotes in there. Yeah, that I really liked in the show. Um, actually, one of them was that love is filled with promise and the beginning of new things, which I think is, I think that's like, it's how true is that? Yeah, you know, because it's like you fall in love and you're like, oh, freaking new things, you know, just just pretty much like how Carrie is. Hopefully. Yeah. But <laughs> and they keep her, she has that same funny, like, she does the pun thing still, just like she does in Sex and the City. And they right. keep it very, you know, it's like a dramedy. So there's yeah. the drama and then there's the funny jokes and it's a mixture of both, which keeps it really entertaining. Yeah, definitely. And I I like to, I've always liked the voiceovers in the Sex and the City um, series. And I think that this is going to be about the same. You know, so I'm looking forward to more like quotes and stuff that she says. So now you know you can post it on like you know Twitter and Facebook and yeah, <laughs> really helps post. you get to know her as a character more exactly. too when you hear the character's thoughts. So. Yeah, definitely. And so I'm hoping that you know the pilot will keep on going, and it's the second episode is coming up next Monday at eight o'clock on the CW, and we will be here on Tuesday. Yep, same mm-hmm. time. <laughs> And but I'm definitely looking forward to doing the show and covering the show. Me too. Do you have any other last comments about the episode? Uh no. I just think that you know the you know prediction wise. I just think like what you said regarding. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. It's prediction time. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Uh sure. Um, I would like to predict that she will get an internship at with Larissa at the inter- interview ma- was it interview magazine. Yes, mm-hmm. interview magazine, and hopefully predict that she will have like a little love triangle between Sebastian and maybe a Manhattan guy. Yeah, I think that's one of my predictions too. And I think her friend Walt is either gonna hook up with a guy or slowly start to come out of the closet which will be interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think that her and her sister, Dorit, might get closer as the episodes go on because in the end of this episode, she was being really nice to her, giving her the dress and everything. But in the beginning, they were worse enemies. So I'm hoping they start to warm up to each other more. Or it could go the complete opposite. Yeah, definitely. And she can rebel completely. So. And then they'll end up pulling each other's hair out. Yeah. That would be a good time. I know. <laughs> we'll just have to find out. <laughs> well, thank you for watching After Buzz TV. Um, you can find me at DanicaKennedy.com or on Twitter at DanicaKennedy. And Anique at and uh, just Anique on Twitter. Buzz you later. Thanks for watching. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you, Buzz, you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.